Opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, welcome everyone to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave from L.A., coming to you live from FEMA region number six. Today is August the 4th, 2017. It is a Friday, and we have a live show for you today. Once again, thank you for being a part of it. And the reason why we're able to have this is because of Black Talk Radio Network, and we're going to need your support to continue to have this. And you can easily do that by giving some of your financial energy by going to Black Talk Radio Network's website, and that would be www.blacktalkradionetwork.com, blacktalkradionetwork.com. And then once you're there, you, you'll be on the uh, hit the home page, and then the uh, far right hand margin, just scroll down, you'll see the green background with the holding hands, and you'll see the word donation that's there. You could just click that, prompt that, and that will lead you into how you can give some of your financial energy to ensure that this network is continuing to bring you what you have deemed already as necessary and relevant. Very important that we support this network so that it can continue to do what it's been doing and so much more. You can also support the network by being a part of this social media outlet known as BTR Community. And on the same homepage, you would just have to scroll down and you'll see the capital B. Just hit uh, hit that and that will prompt you into where you could become a member of BTR Community. Or you can go to www.btrcommunity.com, www.btrcommunity.com. And once you're there, become a member for $24 a year. $24 for a one-year subscription, and then that's where you can engage in all of your social media activities without being adversely affected by the mainstream networks such as FedBook and all the other ones because they actually, your identity can be sold to any bidder, and that it's also used for others to data mine information on you, and that has been a cost many of us have paid and we didn't even know it. Nothing is free. Facebook and Fedbook and all that other stuff is not free. There is a cost for it. But most of us think just because we didn't get cash that there was no cost. This is why we, the, the difference between value and price is so, so different. There's a value that has been uh, sacrificed that's there, and that value has been the compromisation of you. You've been compromised there, and, don't, and that's what they don't want you to know. So come on over to BTR community where you can uh, post your, your you know activities and post your, your comments, post your ideas, post your opinions, without uh, being data mined uh, because it's a membership. So come on over and enjoy that. It's the only place that I post 
So with that being said, definitely please do that. Also, uh, Scotty and Max are going to be making their way to Washington, D.C. for the abolitionist movement that's going to be there. And so we want to send them off and want to give them um, the some financial backing and, and give some donations to them so that they could actually make this trip. And it's going to be August the 19th. Um, I believe it is, yes, August the 19th. So on the homepage for BTR Community, or Black Talk Radio Network, uh, you can actually see the picture of Scotty and Max there. Hit that, and that will lead you into where you can donate for that overall cause as well. Um, we've donated, and we want to continue to ensure uh, that we're putting our best foot forward, and Scotty and Max is some of that that this network has to offer. So we want to make sure that they are going um, in a way that, uh, in a good uh, way, so that they can get there, get back, take care of what needs to be taken care of, and come back to better serve you, the BTR community and the Black Talk Radio Network community listeners and and participants. So, very very important there. All right. Also, before we get going in there, also there's a GoFundMe campaign from my man Michael Emmanuel, and, and you can go to GoFundMe.com, and it's GoFundMe.com uh, forward slash Sam Sam Union Yankee five P dash three five zero zero, and Michael is recovering from chemotherapy. He had germ cell cancer, and the chemotherapy wanted to get him um, some trace minerals so that his body can uh, be able to heal, detoxify, and recuperate and keep the cancer in remission as much as possible. And the family is going to need some things uh, to do that. And there is the campaign that's there. For those of you that are giving and have given, we greatly, greatly appreciate and thank you. Okay? Also, if you'd like to acquire real money, and trade your whatever you get paid in. You can save as a, a king or a queen or as a lady and a gentleman instead of being paid as a slave and saving as a slave. And that is exactly what happens whenever they give you currency is that that is the wage of a slave because it's a debt instrument. So the wage of a king and a queen is gold. The wage of a lady and a gentleman is silver, which is the most important one. And the wage of a slave is debt. So you could go to the website of prosperitymint.com, prosperitymint.com, check out what's in inventory, and you can save in silver and gold, platinum, palladium, and rhodium, and that way so that you will have a real hard asset that was created for sustainability and has real intrinsical value, especially that's going to be very important uh, going forward, and we'll be talking about that some today. Okay, so but make sure uh, you also before you purchase, make sure that you are or before you purchase, make sure you email info at prosperitymint.com, info at prosperitymint.com, so that uh, someone will be able to assist you in explaining and make sure that you understand the overall purchasing uh, process and a very very important part of that, extremely to your benefit. Okay, so. Definitely want to do that. Also, this tomorrow at 2 Central Standard Time, the Control Your Wealth uh, Seminar will be happening tomorrow. Control Your Wealth Seminar is going to be happening tomorrow. And if you like to, and it's going to be online. Um, if you'd like to participate on that, then also you could just info at prosperitymint.com, info at prosperitymint.com. The cost is $300, and someone will get back to you and give you the overall uh, where, to, where to make payment and to get you to the online seminar um, instead of having people traveling uh, because of what's, what's going on in the world. I particularly will not be traveling. I said this earlier this summer that uh, wouldn't be doing it. So I don't want you doing that as well. So if you'd like to participate participate in the Control control Your Wealth Seminar, you could do that and just uh, email info at prosperitymint.com, info at prosperitymint.com, and that's going to be tomorrow. From uh, It's going to start from 2, and it's roughly about, about 3 hours. Let me see. It's roughly 3 hours, okay? 
So definitely want to engage in that. It's four hours, excuse me. It's, it's roughly around four hours. Uh, but if you're not able to make the whole four hours, that's okay. Uh, can, can schedule it for, you could do, uh, two and two. Uh, just, you know, just let, no, let us know. Just go to, uh, info at prosperity mint and we'll be able to take care of you there so that you know. Okay. That is going to be tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Central Standard Time, okay? So if you're on the East Coast, that's going to be at 3. If you're on the West Coast, it's going to be at 12. Okay? All right. So with that being said, let's jump into today's show and what's in the news. And today's show is preparing while everything collapses around us. Excuse me. Prospering while everything is collapsing, while everything collapses around us. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How, what's the opportunities to prosper while everything is collapsing around us? Very, very important. And at the Control Your Wealth seminars, there's definitely uh, some practical things that you should be engaging in that what we talked about there. It's been extremely beneficial to me, and I want to share that uh, with you all as well. And, I mean, it's really been beneficial. Um, I've you know, share some of the things that we've been doing and you'll be able to see it for yourself and they actually, uh, the opportunity is just continue to grow. So we definitely want to do that. All right. So that's today's show. So we're going to jump into, and then, oh, if you'd like to get in on the conversation at any time today, give us a call 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, hit star, star, and we'll see you in queue. We'll and definitely we'll bring you up. Or if we're off on uh, looking at an article or something, just uh, hit star, star, say, excuse me, we'll bring you up and definitely we'll get you going. Okay. So. Let's jump into what's in the news. Let's jump into what's in the news. And the first article that we got posted there, it didn't come up for me. Let me see. Here it comes. This one comes from Cointelegraph.com. Coinbase flips on, excuse me, Coinbase, uh, Coinbase flips on big cash decision and promises support. So check out. That article, um, we got a couple of articles from there, uh, from this website, in some some of the things that's going on. So check out that one. Next article, we got this one comes from. Hmm, I put this one. Let me remove this one. Maybe that's why. Oh man, I had a bunch of articles that I made a mistake in, didn't put them in correctly. So I, oops, I missed a bunch of articles. Oh man! So I'm gonna have to. Hmm. That's all right. We'll just keep going. All right. So next article, uh, I missed about four articles, uh, but it's on my other computers, and I don't remember what they were. Uh, so we'll just keep going. Next article, I got this one from South China Morning Post. And at the break, I'll go uh, grab those uh, articles and put them in. We just got to take a little extended break. Uh, that's all right. All right, so next article. Nah, we won't do it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> next article comes from South China Morning Post. China warns India. It's... Let me move this down. Okay. China warns India in restraint and border standoff has a limit. China's Defense and Foreign Ministry released a statement late on Thursday, yesterday, on the border standoff with India, saying the restraints have a limit and urge Indian troops to withdraw from Chinese from the Chinese border. So this could be ugly, and think it will be. All right, next article. This one comes from Active Post. No, you can't audit the gold. Check out that article. It has um, a lot to do with um, when Germany had wanted to repatriate their gold and they were told no. So check out that article, and there's a reason why. Next article, because they didn't have it. Next article comes from Russia Insider. Washington is going for the jugular. Putin can't afford to, to, can't afford to be patient anymore. Check out that article. Next article, I've got this one from um, Cointelegraph.com. Morgan Stanley, CEO. Eyes cryptocurrency investment vehicle. So a former Morgan Stanley CEO is moving into the crypto space and he's going to establish a crypto, the, his 
organizations own cryptocurrency and offer it to the general population. This is the overall d general di direction of the the new economy, ladies and gentlemen, and I would highly suggest that you know as much as you possibly can and make the proper moves uh, in it, and it will. Hey, Dave. And, but still, no, it's from the same from the same source as Morgan Stanley and the bankers. Yeah, go ahead, Scotty. Yeah, Dave. So, like, I'm a member of this organization, and I'm not really active with them anymore because of some internal things. But I support the overall uh -huh. uh, movement. All it is is just trying to organize uh, black voters into a voting block that looks out for their interests and not the interests of other people, and. So, mm -hmm. but one of the things that they have been promoting that I saw today was, um, you know, our favorite doctors invest in Wall Street class and whatnot. And I, I'm just <laughs> saying, man, come on, you know, the, that's like, I mean, we're going to invest in the companies that's that's oppressing us and other people and things right. of that nature and then trying to sell it like that's going to lead to financial um, how can I put it? Prosperity. Prosperity yeah. and, and what have you. And then the majority of our people trying to survive, man, let alone, you know, trying to get, they ain't got nothing. Because it take money to make money when you're talking about the yes. stock market. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It really yes. do. It take money yes. to make money. That's true in that regard. But it's just that they sleeping on this cryptocurrency, dog. They sleeping on it. And we talked about yeah. it in the past about Africa, uh, uh, you know, trying to fulfill Gaddafi's righteous dream of a unified currency for all of Africa to trade with each other. And they could accomplish that through cri cryptocurrency. And then you got yep. this, this white only South African town. It's just so embarrassing, man. I mean, this is a whites only town in South Africa, right? But now they just launched a cryptocurrency for whites only. I'm like, man. I, yeah, Scotty, it's it, it it's it's real, and it's 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 something that our our people have to really get. May, you know they they need to be made aware of it, and because there's not that many people that's doing. We, we we follow trends instead of setting them. When I mean by financially, where we we establish things where people exploit it, and this is you know the the cryptocurrencies. It is something that you should be using, and that's what today's show is uh, partly going to be about. You should use it to your advantage. Understand that it's still a system. But it's opportunity for you to withdraw from it and to do other things with it. And, you know, the Tando Radio Show listeners should, and Black Talk Radio, radio listeners should not be sleeping on cryptocurrencies because we've been, we've given you and we've talked about it. And I'm going to tell you, you know, some of the things, and this is part of the Controlling Your Wealth seminar. I actually show you, you know, some of the things that I put in my portfolio and what they've done. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, and it doesn't take a whole bunch, but you know, I'm, I hate to say it. Sometimes for, you know, our people and our people in general, a lot of times they won't get into something until it has mainstream media advertisement. And that's where you miss out on it. Let me just say this about the cryptos. Is it a risk? Huge risk. Is it some? the risk can be mitigated? Yes, to a degree, but it's still going to be a risk. There's so many different risks with it. But are are there people that are doing well with it and are actually being able to use it? Yes, I do, and I know, and I'm just telling you from, from my own standpoint. And there's been times that I didn't put a lot of cash into um, the cryptocurrencies, and they did phenomenal. Uh, you know, it's it's just phenomenal. I haven't taken I haven't taken one cent out of it, other than taking out just to make sure that um, if I needed to withdraw, it would happen. But I didn't take anything out. I just moved things around and everything else, and it's it's building a portfolio and it's is doing well. Is this is an opportunity that is not going to be coming back around because the whole world will be using cryptocurrency. Black Talk Radio Network will, will be using cryptocurrencies. Everybody will be using currencies. They're going to be using cryptocurrencies, and, and they're going to be using the blockchain for voting. 
They're gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna integrate itself into everything. You have an opportunity to get into it, you know, at the earliest stages. Well, the earliest stages was actually from 2007, 2008, 2009, up into 2000 and, and to about to 2015. That was the the very very bottom when no one was really looking at, and and that's when you really could have made to where right now your investments from that would have made you a multimillionaire right now. But by you making the necessary moves right now, it's not over. It's only going to expand and get a whole lot bigger. But there are some things that are not going to do well. There are some things that are going to absolutely just be household names. How many of you heard of Bitcoin? two years ago, three years ago. How many of you heard of it four years ago? How many of you heard of it five years ago? And each time you would ask that where people would go less, 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 and less. How many of you had any cryptocurrencies last year? How many of you had cryptocurrencies in 2015, 14, 13, or 12? Well, if you did, that overall cryptocurrency, uh, depending on which one it was, let's take Bitcoin in particular, has done phenomenally well, and it is now a household name. It's not going anywhere. And the thing is that, yes, it's run by the same system, but the opportunity for you to take from the system and get what you need, hard assets and, and prosperity and everything else, why wouldn't you use that leverage? Why wouldn't you use that leverage? So definitely think that that's something um, that you should be able to do. And so... Um, so I got the other uh, the other articles that I thought that I posted that didn't um, actually go uh, in. So I made a mistake there. All right. So the uh, next article is going to be the power of saying. Oh, well, I didn't mean to cut off uh, Scotty if, if if he had any other comments. Yeah, we are sleeping on the cryptocurrencies, and I'm going to be telling you uh, some of the things in the controlling your wealth. I show you examples and give you ones that I that I think you should be engaged in. But I'm going to also today. Uh, talk about that and show you why you should be engaging in it from for a minimum what do you have to lose and it's 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 just a matter of what is it that you have to gain is the most important thing and, and you got to you got to balance that out and the balance is where you should be doing it and this is what I say you don't save in cryptocurrencies you invest in them you don't use that as your savings so use it leverage it to your advantage all right so now all right so next article is going to come from uh, The Waking Times, The Power of Saying No. Man, I love that one. Check out that article. You definitely want to um, uh, read that one. And then it was uh, the next article. The One of the articles that I missed was uh, Bitcoin surges toward record high as cash uh, as uh, cash crashes over 70%. Bitcoin had forked uh, the beginning of the week. It went into Bitcoin and then into Bitcoin Cash, and, and the cash one um, has a way to go. It's been crashing, um, but the Bitcoin, uh, traditional Bitcoin is still uh, growing. Next article. This one comes from Russia Insider. Uh, EU uh, back, blacklists three Russian nationals, three companies over the semen turbine uh, to cr Crimea uh, sanctions. So check out that article. These whole sanctions is going to lead to some real, real uh, altercations. And those were the ones that I missed. So that was that is what's in the article. And so we're going to jump into today's show and if you got any comments or questions that you would like to jump on uh, give us a call 866-510-9025 866-510-9025 then hit star star see you in queue and we'll definitely bring you up give me a second I'll be one second everyone got to had to go and find the other articles did that so now we're going to jump back into today's show so today's show is Prospering while everything else collapses around us because everything is going to, in my opinion, be collapsing around us. It actually is already is. How many of you have driven around the city, the town, the, the, the county, or the geographical area where you live? It doesn't matter if you're in a big city, a big major city, or you're in a small town. It just may show it in, in, in different degrees. But if you have... And if you've gone anywhere else and noticed it 
just and just travel, you can see the overall economic, excuse me, one second. You can see the overall economic displacement that is already happening. We've covered a lot of that um, here on Candle Radio Show, so you know that's real. You can see it. Now, the key is, it is it's not going to stop because it's being orchestrated by those that built it. So since they created that paradigm and that 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 arena, they have the controlling influence over where it's going. So they're going to continue that th this whole thing is going to continue to deteriorate much much further. But what you have control over is your response to everything. Just because everything around you is deteriorating doesn't mean that you have to go in that direction. Okay? And there are definitely things that, that you should be doing to protect yourself and your family to ensure that you're not going in that direction. You know, the rest of the world in so many ways, the, 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 the influence that the world has right now is telling you what you should be doing. And what that is, is removing yourself. The rest of the world is divesting themselves and moving away from the U.S. dollar. You should too. And I know it's difficult for, for us to do that here because it's the only thing, is the only form of medium of exchange that we've ever really been exposed to or we've been taught to engage in and we've, we've seen it and we've believed that it has worked as money and it never has. It just that at that particular time, that was the overall direction of, that the controlling interest wanted it to do. Now it's going to go in a different direction. And, and knowing that and making the necessary moves and the proper moves will be to your benefit. So. There was an article, because yesterday I couldn't read, there's a couple of articles I wanted to, to, to read to you and then, and then talk about um, getting in, into proper position. So let me just say this also before we go, because I, I meant to mention this yesterday. We talked about this yesterday with uh, the U.S. telling all Americans to be out of North Korea, um, or if you're trying to go to North Korea, um, you won't be able to go there. They won't be giving any passports. And then those that are in North Korea, uh, Americans that are in North Korea, they need to be out by September 1st. But one of the things that I forgot to also mention is, and I did somewhat, is that those that are vacationing around those areas of, uh, of that area of the world, that region of the world, you need to know and put you, me, myself, I wouldn't be doing it. I don't care what it is. I want a free trip to Singapore. I want, you know, this, this. I wouldn't go. It's not worth it. It, it is absolutely not worth it for me because being trapped there, once it does happen, you can't go back in time to say, I changed my mind. Let, let me just, you know, this 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 not worth it. I wish I didn't do it. No, we, we got to learn from some of the things that we made mistakes in before in the past, because this is a, by doing that, you're hoping on something that you have no control over doesn't happen. And the likelihood of it happening is much greater than it's, it's been before. So vacationing completely in that region of the world, going on a cruise especially is going to be extremely Dangerous, and I'm gonna tell you why in one second. the The reason why going on a cruise in that area or that region of the world, and I mean from Hawaii, and let me give it the, for me, Hawaii, Alaska, all of that region to Asia is out of the question, completely out of the question. And here's why, even taking a cruise, one of the things that happens, if let's just say, because we don't know what's going to happen, but the likelihood, and I would say to you, is it likely that the U.S. 10 years ago, was it likely that the U.S. would be engaged in North Korea in a military confrontation? The answer most of us would say is, 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 
It could happen, but probably not. Right now, they're telling you they're doing it. They're making moves. They're positioning themselves. They're preparing for it. They're not preparing for it not to happen. They're preparing for it to happen. It is going to happen, in my, in, in my opinion. It hasn't happened yet, but the likelihood of it happening real soon, and they're giving you all of those indications, never before have they done this. Never before have they been, and they're doing this for a reason. So here's the dangerous thing, like taking a cruise to Hawaii at this time is extremely dangerous. And I would say it is even more dangerous than being in Hawaii or being in, um, you know, well, I wouldn't say South Korea. That That is, is going to be a real, real hot spot. Or being in some other places, being on a, a cruise ship. Here's why. If the U.S. tax, or when the U.S. tax North Korea, if North Korea, which is a nuclear-capable country, and I will say this, this would be the first time that the U.S. ever engaged with a nuclear-capable country country that has nukes to defend themselves. It'd be the first time. Now, the overall playing field isn't equal, but the U.S. has always been engaging in militarily in these modern times. They've always fought nations that didn't have nukes. They've never not fought a nation. They've never engaged a nation that, was a, that had nuclear technology. This is something that you need to be very cognizant of. Vietnam didn't have it. Iran didn't, I mean, Iraq didn't have it. Afghanistan didn't have it. Grenada didn't have them. Panama didn't have it. Uh, Korea the first time didn't have it. And anywhere that they've ever gone uh, d didn't have it. This would be the first time. So where a country would be able to use nuclear weaponized technology to defend itself and to use it offensively, it's a big shift. So now, being on a cruise at this time is extremely dangerous because one of the things, when, when Obama was president, celebrity figurehead Obama was president, and he received the Nobel Peace Prize, the day that he was going to be receiving the Nobel Peace Prize, there was a Chinese submarine, allegedly, a Chinese submarine that was off the Catalina, is off the islands of Catalina in, in Southern California, in that area, by the island of Cal Catalina, not far from Los Angeles, was off the coast, and it shot off a ballistic missile. It came that close to the shore, the, the shores of, of the U.S. I didn't get to see it, but I saw it on the news. And what I saw on the news, they tried to say that it was a plane. No, that was no plane. No plane can ascend at that degree. And so they shot it off, and they made it known that they were doing it. Here's what they didn't also tell you. There was a cruise ship that was in that area of Catalina. And, and what happened was that allegedly that Chinese submarine came up and it sent out an EMP, an electronic, uh, electronic magnetic pulse that disabled everything in its, in its uh, area, uh, in, its, in its region or in close, to, in, any, in close proximity to it. Why did it do that? If there was any military uh, uh, vehicles, planes, or anything else, it was a defense mechanism that they would have, that they had. So, came up, put a uh, put a AMP out in in the uh, in the atmosphere. Anything that was out there at that particular time would have lost all power. Well, just so you know. There was a, or I believe it was a Norwegian cruise ship that was there, and it was dead in the water. Dead in the water mean it had no power, no engine power, no power at all. And that's the last thing a ship needs, and this is the dangerous thing about being on a cruise at that time. 
around this time. North Korea would do the same thing, or China would do the same thing, or guess what? The U.S. would do the same thing. Yes, they would give advisement to the different uh, cruise ships not to be in that area and everything else, maybe. But if one of them was going to do a surprise attack, they won't tell anybody. Just like China didn't tell anybody when they came up, they just disabled everything. And last thing you want to be is doing an engagement where the U.S. is engaging a nuclear-capable uh, country, and you're on a cruise ship, and it goes dead in the water. You know what that means? No one is coming to pick you up. No one is going to be coming to pick you up because everyone will be dealing with the problems of the engagement. And depending on how big it is, you'll be sitting out in the, out in the ocean. The food will spoil. You saw what happened to that one ship that lost power. What happened to the sewage? It started coming through the walls. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how, I don't care how thirsty you are. There's no person that could drink all that water out in the middle of the ocean. That would be a sad, sad predicament. And the likelihood of surviving that, the only thing that matters, the only determination of surviving that is how North Korea would respond to it. If North Korea has just a somewhat of a, of a, um, credible response and if they have a more than credible response you can forget it and if China gets involved in it and Russia gets involved in it you can absolutely forget it that ship will stay out there it will be a ghost ship and, and if a rogue wave happens to hit it and there will be some rough seas because I believe that technology will be used to, to actually cause tsunamis and everything else. So this, is, this travel advisory isn't just for North Korea. The, the game has really changed extremely. So I just wanted to express that to you. didn't mean to go that far into it, but it needed to be said because I don't know. There may be some of you that may be planning on taking a vacation here, but I, I would say, man, cancel and go at some other time. Reschedule. It's not worth it. And then if someone if someone goes, your friends go or you go and everything goes along and does happen, everything is happy, nothing happens, that's cool. But see, the thing is, if something do, does happen, if, if nothing happens, no problem, right? But if something does happen, you go, no, nothing happens, you don't lose anything. But if something does happen while you're there and the likelihood of it do, you lose everything. You lose everything in a very miserable, miserable way. Water, water everywhere, nothing to drink. And the food will spoil. It will be, it will turn just the overall, ships have problems in it, man. So just don't do it. It's not worth it. So if you have any questions um, about that, um, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. I'll be more than happy to, to, to engage with you um, with that. All right, so one of the articles, and we're talking about how you were prosper. Very, very important. An article I wanted to read yesterday, but I wasn't able to read because I wasn't on the board. Uh, I couldn't see. We just couldn't do it. So. The article, pulling it up here, that I wanted to make aware to you, and this is very critical for us repositioning ourselves. It says, it's your money, but you can't have it. EU proposes account freezes to halt bank runs. What they're going to do is they're trying to halt people from running to the bank and withdrawing all of their cash. And this is in the EU. And whatever the EU is doing, the U.S. will be doing. Whatever the U.S. does, the EU does banking-wise because it's all big one uh, unfranchised, okay? There is no difference. So here's the article. You didn't get to read it. Here's the article. And this article comes from, I, I got this one uh, from Mishtalk. 
Bankrun.com. Here we go. If there is a bank run, any bank in the EU, and if there is a bank run on any bank, any bank in the EU, you better be among the first to get your money out. And I would say this, if there is a bank run on any bank in the United States, you better be the first one there to get your, your cash out. They said money. I don't, that's not money. Although it's your, it's your money, the EU wants to freeze accounts to prevent bank runs at failing banks. The European Union stated, states, let me move this down. The European Union states are considering measures which would allow them to temporarily stop people from withdrawing money from their accounts to prevent bank runs. An EU document review by Reuters revealed. The move is aimed at helping rescue lenders in deemed failing or likely to fail, but critics say it could hurt confidence and may even hasten withdrawals at the first rumor of banking trouble, of a bank being in trouble. Well, I'm going to just say this. All the banks are in trouble. The rumors you've already heard. I mean, like, what other rumors do you need? It's, it's, it's already happened. So, but the article is going on. The proposal, which has been in the works since the beginning of this year, comes less than two months after a run on deposit at Banco Popular con- uh, contributed to the collapse of the Spanish lender. See, this is where the problem lies. They care more about the institution than the individuals in the institution. This bank was going to fail anyhow. You know what they wanted to do? They wanted it to fail with everything that the people had in it, in it. They didn't want the people to be able to withdraw anything. They said that that caused the failure. No, that's not what caused the failure. The whole fraudulent, the, the whole system that's, that's uh, just right with ubiquitous fraud is the cause for the problem. So now they said, okay, see, this is why they, this is, this is why Fedbook, this is why all these, they data mine everything. They want to see how people are going to respond. And then once people respond a certain way, what do they do? They change, in the, they change up the overall rules so it makes it more difficult for you to respond so that they'll get what they want. They want to catch you slipping. And, and a continuous perpetual fall. Not one time, not two times, continuously. And that fall, they want you to fall for your whole physical existence of life. So, just fix this real quick. So, that's, uh, once you finish this, here we go. I want you to think about this. Here we go, one second. All right, so it goes on. The article goes on. Giving, giving, supervisors, giving supervisors the power to temporarily block bank accounts at ailing lenders is a feasible option, a paper prepared by the Estonian presidency of the EU said, acknowledging that member states were divided on the issue. EU countries, which already allow a moratorium on bank uh, payouts and insolvent procedures at national levels, like Germany, support the measures, officials said. Now, let me just stop here. Here's what what they're doing. They're saying that, hey, we're thinking about this, but guess what? They've already instituted it. It's already been it's already been instituted. And the reason why they do this is this this is how you combat the overall leaking of information of what they plan on doing. Then now, it's already been done. And then what they do is they say, now we're thinking about it. Some countries are for it. Some countries are against it. Why did they do that? So once this, this word gets out to people, then they come back with a response to it. So people are like, oh, well, they're, they're probably going to work it out. I'll be all right. Everything will be all right if they even hear about it. And when they don't do anything about it. And it's so funny. You know, we're so how this system 
has been so effective is that the system knows that they can train and indoctrinate people to do what they want by training the few and, and, and maintaining momentum. If they don't, if people don't see a bunch of people going into the bank taking their stuff out, you know what that people will say? People that know that they should be doing it say, "Oh well, I guess it's okay." You guess is okay. Why? Because other people aren't doing it. See what they do is that they 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 corral people. They have herd mentality thinking. Oh well, this person they're not doing it. I guess it's okay. And guess what? The overall reasons why you were thinking about it from the beginning didn't change at all. Those circumstances are still in play because we don't see a bunch of other people doing it. So then now nah, it's okay. But if we start to see a bunch of people running in a certain direction, then we all start running with them. That's the herd mentality. And it's a very dangerous way of thinking because it doesn't benefit you at all. It actually benefits those that are shepherding, those that are herding the crowd. So for you all, we've been talking about this. You know what's been happening. You know what's possible. You know what's on the table. The key to being prepared is that you have to Prepare yourself when no one else is looking. You don't want the herd mentality. While the herd is still grazing, you're working. While the herd is on the right, you're far on the left. While the herd is behind you, you're far in front of them. While they're, while they're on your, you know, anywhere else, you're in the opposite direction of them. Because there's great power in that. You were born not in a herd, but as an individual doesn't matter if you were twins or everything else. You both didn't come out at that exact same time. Individuals are important. All right, so individual thinking is critical. All right. Article continues. The desire to prevent a bank run. I mean, well, let me read the uh, art, the. Uh, the sentence before that. EU countries, which have already allowed a moratorium on bank uh, payouts and insolvent procedures at national levels like Germany, Germany has that procedure already in place, support the measures, officials say. The desire to prevent a bank run so that when a bank is in a critical situation, it is not pushed over the edge. Stop right there. People protecting themselves is not going to push the bank over the edge. The bank is already over the edge, but the opportunity for you to respond appropriately is winding down. It's already hit the critical point way before they tell you. The overall dynamics of insolvency is way before they tell you that they're insolvent. Here's how it goes. They go and solve it and they still stay in business until they, they, they totally go away. And once a bank is insolvent, guess what? It still will have its doors open, its tellers open, its ATMs kicking out cash. You, it's incumbent upon you to know when a bank is insolvent. And for you to take the appropriate measures and appropriate actions beforehand, it's just like a tsunami. You don't try to un outrun the tsunami when the water is at your heels. I mean, when the, when the water is is already rushing in, you get rid of a rid of a, a, a you get away from a, a tsunami when the water is residing, going out. That's when you better start running. That's when you better start getting away. Or, as we talked about before, when the animals, you see them starting to run towards the high ground and everything else and grows and they're acting weird, you better follow. That's when you do it. That's where the safety is. The safety is, is before the actual event, not during. It's too late. 
So the bank wasn't in critical condition because I'm um, pushed over the edge because the people went in to, to withdraw. They never had it from the beginning. Every bank is in a critical situation if only the, the depositors knew that none of it was there. It's already there over the edge. Just don't know it yet. So it goes on. Or it just hasn't played out yet. A, permission, a person familiar with German's thinking said the Estonia proposal was discussed by, EU, by the EU envoys on July the 13th, but no decision was made. That's, that's a lie. Whenever they tell you that stuff, it's a lie. It's already been made a while ago. It's been made years and years ago. EU officials said the discussions were, were due to continue in September. Hold on. U.S. says get out of North Korea by September. These people saying we're going to revisit this back in September. What's up with September, y'all? What always happens in September? A bunch of stuff. It's a ritual practice. Article goes on. Approval of EU lawmakers will require any final decision. Under the plan discussed, by EU states, payouts could be suspended for five working days, and the block could be extended to a maximum of 20 days in, ex in exceptional circumstances, the Estonian document said. Spooky customers. With Charles Banner of the Association for Financial uh, Markets in Europe, who said, we strongly believe that this would, would incentivize, incentivize depositors to run from a bank at an early stage. Hear what they said? So, hey, man, don't make, when you make these decisions, don't tell these people. Because he said, we strongly believe that this would incentivize, incentivize the depositors to run from a bank at an early stage. Stage. They don't want to spook the customers. They want the customers to lose everything. Don't don't wake them. Don't don't get them aware. Shut up, Tando Radio Show. Don't be telling them this stuff. When when we when we pull a trap, we want them all in it. You messing it up for us. Article goes on. Why might customers want to run? Here's a trillion reasons over one trillion non-performing EU loans versus the U.S. percentage. Non-performing loans. And if you look at this in this article, you'll see why the customers in, why this policy is being brought forth in Europe. And guess what, y'all, is here too already. What they're basically saying is that they're going to have bank holidays, and they're going to say that it goes from five days to the maximum of 20 days in ex exceptional circumstances. No, they lie and they lie and they lie. They told that to people in Greece, excuse me, in Cyprus. They said it would just be two days. Then the two days end up being five days. And they said, well, it would just be for the week. And then the, the next week it, it came out for the next two. They said, well, it's still unstable. We're just going to need to do this for another two weeks, and everything will settle this thing out. One year later, they still were in that same position. So what does that tell you? Promises always. You have to think for yourself. You have to think for yourself. You have to protect yourself. And I would say, let those that doubt, let them be the ones their accounts get frozen. That's their choice. That's on them. That has, got to, has nothing to do with you. That's why you'll be able to prosper while everything else collapses around you. Because you're doing things before everything happens. Then when things do happen, those that didn't do anything, that's on them. That was the choice that they made. We've all made good choices. We all made bad choices. The consequences of those are ours. You got, if you want to take ownership of them or you don't, it doesn't matter. It still happens. Still happens. 
This is going to happen and it's set up here to happen. It's already happening now. Look at how many ATM machines are around and not tellers. That's freezing you. That's freezing you out of getting to to your bank. Look at how much they tell you to, they they promote you to do everything online now from your cell phone from your home. That's freezing you out of getting to to do a bank run. Look at how many hours have been cut in the banks. The cut now is all over the place. Look at how many banks are closing. They're stopping you from doing the bank run, but it's a small, subtle thing. And before you know it, they spring the trap. And guess what? You on vacation somewhere. And believe me, it may be the best place in the world, but that great hotel that you in is going to kick you out when you can't pay that bill. So listen, y'all. Got to get ready to go to a, oh, no, I got a, a, a minute or so more. But if you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Hit star, star, to see you in queue. Um, so these are some of the things that is happening here, and, and they're disguising it by, by everything else. Notice how few tellers they have now in different banks. Yeah, there are some banks that they have, you know, ample and everything, the larger ones and everything else, but look at their doors. They got some pretty sturdy doors, don't they? They got pretty sturdy doors to keep you out. They got ATM machines everywhere. ATM machines is the anti-bank run. They've learned from the past. What you going to do when you go to an ATM machine put your, your, and it won't even let you put your card in? You've just been frozen out of your account. What happens when you do everything online from your cell phone or from your home? And you go to do something and you can't, what you get, a DNI or a, a DNS? You've just been frozen out your account. What happens when they do it on the weekend, they hit it on, start on Friday, and Saturday it starts to, 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 to build. They close early on Saturday, and all heck breaks loose from then until Monday, and then they don't open up on Monday morning. You've just been frozen out of your account. They're giving you these signals. Why would they be even writing this? Why would they be even saying this? Because they know that all the banks are going to be going through this at a very large, in, in, at a very large percentage. So our response to this is so critical. So if you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Uh, we're getting ready to come back and we'll continue today's show. So you listen to Tando Radio Show brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Since 2008, providing new black media for the masses. 
Okay, welcome back, everyone, to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave, from L.A. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, definitely do that. Give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. We'll see you in queue, and definitely we'll bring you up. Looking forward to talking to you. So in this um, next part of the show, I want to talk about some of the things, why uh, you'll be able to prosper in one of the the very important things as as to why is because one you know things are, have changed and you are going to and you should have and you are hopefully you are taking the necessary precautions because um normalcy bias is not going to is not going to save you only an action plan is going to be productive for you and your family a inactive plan is going to continue to put um, ourselves in the position that we've been in in the past, but is going to only deepen itself far, far worse. Okay, so definitely want to um, take a look at and give you some reasons as to why and how, when everything collapses around you, why you'll be in a better position than most will be, which is, in my opinion, extremely, extremely, extremely important. So. Definitely want to talk about that. Okay, now, some of the reasons, but there was one more article that was critical. Here's why preparing is so important. There was an article that I posted, I believe it was on Tuesday, and this one came in, and we were talking about it um, the day that we talked about the black swan, I believe it was, the uh, the event. Um, and we talked about, and we showed, we were talking about how the U.S. in the fourth quarter is going to do, actually create in debt over a half a trillion dollars in in a three month time period when it took up until the eighties since the inception of the of the country, it took up until the eighties to get to one trillion dollars. But they're gonna do it in three months, which took them over hundreds a uh, uh, hundred a hundred and some years to to do. But they're gonna do it in three months. What does that mean? That that means that the rest of the world is no longer accepting or wanting your cash and they sending it back. So, but there was one article from the uh, Department of, of Commerce that I want to touch on real quickly before we get into what you should be doing and why you should be doing it. And then this article, just um, got it pulled up here. And this article, oops, let me just get this real quick. And, and to me, this article was, was critical because it showed just how much has been siphoned slowly away from everyone. And if you just bear with me for a second, I'll pull up, let me pull this up. And it is... One second. And it basically was saying that it was a loss of a couple of trillion dollars that people had. One second. Let me just pull this up. I should have did this during the... All right. Here we go. One second. Oh, uh, man, where that brother? Okay, so I got it. Must have it on my other one. All right, well, okay, well, here's what it is. So what what was actually said in this Commerce, I do, but I'm not going to. No, I'm going to go grab it real quick. So I want to just show you this. And what it was basically saying is that more and more cash has been lost 
per household where the usual amount of of cash that we otherwise would have at our disposal is not there. And, and what does that mean? So what does that do for us? That deleverages us to be able to do what? To acquire things that are necessary, the things that we need. And so because of that, we get put in a position of disadvantage even further. And so in this actual article, and the system tells you, you just have to find these type of things. And they tell you actually how much was was taken out. So let me just um, hear it. Let me is, is it right there? Hold on. Let me, I got it. Uh, let me just hey Dave, find it real uh, quick. just just talk about a specific amount. Yeah, go ahead, Scotty. You got a call on the board. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let's go to that caller. And while we go to that caller, I'll pull up um, this um, as well. Welcome, caller, to Tando Radio Show. What is your name? Where you're calling from? And what is your question or comment? Hey, Dave. This is Sister Davis. Did you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, Sister Davis. What's happening? Good, good. I just wanted to pick you back on what you were saying about the banking, closing, and all of that. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to just reiterate that you were so absolutely right. I mean, we listen, my husband and I, we listen to several, you know, news media like yourself, you know, Coast to Coast, Ground Zero, Caravan of Midnight, everybody's saying the same thing. All the all alternatives are all same, same, same. Plus, whatever you see on Facebook and some of the YouTube videos, it, it's coming. And I tell you what, I, I think I called in at the time it happened, back I think around in May, we had made a large purchase, and we went to, you know, we were at, uh, you know, we went to get our ATM card, and it was a Friday, like 5 o'clock, and I think Monday was a holiday, and that sucker wasn't working, and, I mean, my heart just went, and I said, is this it? Is this the time that Dave is talking about? You know what I mean? It's just, you, you know, you're right. there, stuff on the back of your neck, because you don't know. All you know is that you can't get the money out. You know, and then finally, when I called the bank, after it took me a while to get to them, uh, they, you know, you got to push one, push two, blah, blah, blah. And uh, finally, when I got through, the guy said, well, try to do two smaller increments as opposed to the total, which, you know, we did, and then that worked. And then we went to another source, and, you know, we got the money out. But I tell you what, that, I mean, me and my husband, we looked at each other with them bug eyes like, oh, my God, is this it? So that was such a good preview for us because I think you had said on a previous show that it don't matter if you're the fastest sprinter in the Olympics, you ain't going to get to the bank in time when it happens because it's already happened before you know. And um, I just want to iterate that all the sources, all the alternative sources are saying the same exact thing. So people need to be prepared. Even if you don't have that much money in there, if you got five hundred dollars, that five hundred dollars more that you don't have. You know what I mean? We're, you know, some of us right. you know, all change. We ain't got millions and got hundreds of thousands in there. We just got a couple thousand. But when you need that money and you're looking forward to it, and you go to get it, and you make a purchase or whatever, and you can't, that's a heads up. Plus all the other welfare systems, the food stamps, the medical. All these little glitches are showing up. You know, people got their medical card, can't get their prescriptions. People got their food stamps, can't do the e EFS or whatever, EPS or whatever. Mm -hmm. All these little glitches are just pre warning, you know. So, what do you do, man? Do what? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Richard, my husband just said, well, tell him what we do to get around it. Well, what we do is uh, since we're not, we don't, you know, since we're always traveling, we don't use our local bank. And uh, right. I'm not so okay. So generally, we go to stores and pull out money as, um, you know, uh, cash, getting cash back Walmart or or Target, wherever we mm -hmm. go. You know, we'll we'll take fifty dollars here, a hundred dollars there. And, and we put, keep in just what we know is going to be pulled out for our banking, you know, um, you know, different things that we might have on our uh, ATM cards that are going to pull out. 
we keep just that in there. Other than that, we pull that sucker out. I we've gotten so good at it, it's like phenomenal. <laughs> Thursday, okay, honey, how much is gonna say? Okay, this got me paid, blah blah blah. And we've got it calculated. We go to our look, I buy I go to Walmart and buy ten things and take out money for each each time. Yeah. Out. You know what I mean? They they don't care, yeah. I don't care. Oh so, and um and, and I don't know, sometimes they do notice it, and, but they don't say anything because they can't. But, uh, right, and that might shut down eventually that you can't do, get your money out. But uh, but it, it, I'm telling you, you are so on point, so on point. But before I go, I also have to piggyback. I don't know what all you want to talk about in the show, but are you aware of this AI that um, uh, spoke a different language and they had to shut some things down? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was yeah. It was it was actually uh, Facebook. It was the, yeah, the Facebook one. But but then I also heard on the one show that there was some banking that could not encrypt what was being said. So yes, you know yes, I mean? Sister Davis. That was the one they didn't want to get out. That yeah. was the one they did. And and what 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 Sister Davis? And let me just say this real quick, Sister Davis. You and Brother Davis, I absolutely love you. Sister Davis knew that I was looking for something, and what did she do? She called in to give and to give me some time. Sister Davis and, and Brother Davis is always, always sharp, and so that gave me time to listen and to find that article that I needed to bring to you all. So, Sister Davis, Brother Davis, I appreciate y'all so much. This is when I zig and zag, Brother and Davis, uh, Brother and Sister Davis is always right there. That AI that's talking a different language, man, that should be heads up on everybody's radar because, you know, they, that's where they're going to blame them. You know, they need to blame them. Yeah, right, they to, right. They need an outlet to say, oh, she just shut down, blah, blah, blah. And they, they're putting it all together. They try to make it sound like it's just Facebook because that's what everybody's on. But some of the news sources, they didn't say what bank. They just said some banking entities also have problems with the AI talking a different language. And if you remember uh, the Terminator with the Skynet, that's what started it, too. So it started speaking mm-hmm. a different language that the other, you know, uh, that nobody else but the other uh, AI could understand, and everything went haywire. So, you know, yeah, that happened this week. It's kind of being staged on the, on the, on the down low, but uh, that's a real heads up. That's something, and see, you don't want that AI talking to the medical, uh, you know, you don't want your AI talking to the, um, the, uh, um, <laughs> so right. like, I mean, all of that is the same type of network. You you know, it could, it could make everything shut down just because the language, just because they don't know what it's saying, they have to shut it down because they don't want it to say the wrong thing. They could do nuclear countdowns. They could do anything. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. That, so later on, I'll, I'll go back in the room and listen. But, yeah, later on, you can pick it back on that uh, when you get all the information. I got it. Thank you so much, Sister Davis. And yes, Sister Davis is absolutely right. And the thing that was that's crazy about that one, or watch, they'll say that, oh yeah, we it was it had come up again. It says, yeah, the, the, all of all of a sudden, the AI started talking. It was a different language, and we found out they were speaking North Korean. And then they'll blame. It's, hey, it's so hey, many Dave. crazy. It's so many crazy. It's, it's just so sick. Uh, what it was was happening here. Go ahead, Scotty. Yeah, they were speaking English, but. They had bastardized the English to where it looked like gibberish to somebody else. So, like, right. like when I when I was stationed in Hawaii, I learned a bastardized f- a language called pidgin. And so, it, you know, mm-hmm. if, if if somebody else don't know pidgin, unless you know the code to pidgin, then nobody will understand what you're saying. It sound like English, mm-hmm. but you won't understand it. Okay, so that's what these two uh, AI um, um, AI robots were saying mm-hmm. to each other, and then they couldn't understand. They couldn't decipher what they was talking to each other about. And one of the AI experts <laughs> said that uh, Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, is playing with something that he don't really understand. He don't really understand AI. He just got a bunch of money. You just, you know what I'm saying? Right. And he don't really understand right. it. Right. But they were saying, like, 
I'll, I'll have read articles where they've been working on like these robots for the battlefield, you know, to where, where you send yeah. a robot in and, and it could kill a bunch of people. But if it gets destroyed where there's no human loss, no human life loss. But they were saying in the article, OK, now what what if you running these things on A.I.? And they start talking to each mm. other, and they be like, you know, kill all the humans, <laughs> <laughs> right, guy? And, and you know, the, you know, I'm not a programmer, um, but believe me, some someone put that program in, and and this is yeah, it, it's it's like Scotty was saying, is is like pig Latin or pig this or that, or or, or like Scotty, you gave the example. With uh, what he said, and they can't decipher what's really being said. They can't distinguish or understand what's being said, and this is a problem. And this is this is not going to go away. This is only going to continue to get much much bigger because that's what this system really wants. Is is that's how you garnish more control over people? So yeah, this is going to be crazy. But yes, Sister Davis and, and, and uh, Scotty, I did hear about that, and I heard about the Zuckerberg part of it too. Uh, Zuckerberg doesn't know what he's doing and what he's playing with, and then so they they shut it down and, and everything else. But the bank one was 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 very strategic. They tell you everything before they do it. So. Very, very true. All right, real quick, and then I want to get into what some of the things that we should be doing. I want to at least spend uh, 30 minutes with that. And, and, and if you have any questions or comments, I'm not on the board, so you can call in. Now, there was an article, and I found the article. Thank you, Sister Davis. Thank you, Scotty, uh, for give, getting me that time to, to do that. And Brother Davis, I, I, I see y'all, and I truly, truly appreciate y'all. And my man, uh, Rise, will do that from time to t- time. And my man, uh, Ramon, will do that. for L.A. Ramon will do that from time to time. I appreciate and Brother Braggs will do that. I love that. It was, it's just, you know, working together, and I appreciate it. All right, so from the Bureau of Economics Analysis, and this is from the Department of Commerce, what happened was this. They posted that there was over a quarter trillion dollars in U.S. savings that was wiped out. That's a freeze. That's a that's a bank that's a bank run. That's them running on you. It's not a run on the banks, it's a run on the accounts. But see there's a difference between a bank run. A bank run is when people go take their money from the banks. A run on their accounts is when the bank run runs and takes everything out their accounts. A quarter trillion dollars in US savings. And in it how you see it is the graph it says US personal savings rate original and revised that's one thing that they always do whenever they come out with job numbers and they say oh the job is here no it's not that you got to hear the revised one after that the revised one say oh no well it was further down than what we thought and this is what they always do they playing on people so now the revised one shows that personal income personal savings the projected was um, uh, was one thing. The personal savings originally is in in this, and what you could do on this. I'm, I posted inside of um, inside of um, BTR community. You can look at that and and just pull up the chart that's there, and it also says it uh, from here. The revised personal, and then if you read it, here it is. Let me just uh, pull it up. In 2000, in May of 2017, the actual numbers was from from May to June. In May, personal savings was 791 billion. Before the revision, after they revised it in July to, to, to show more of really where it was, it was at 56, 546 billion. That's a $226 billion loss. That's a quarter of a trillion dollars. That's right at a quarter of a trillion dollars. That was loss. Where did that go? Tell you where that went. There was a run on the account. Stole this, 
And this is, this is how they don't care about bank runs. They already got everything out. And the revisions is always, always way lower than what they initially report as being the, the – why is this so important, ladies and gentlemen? Because what is really happening is that they are making you work for free. Because the system of enslavement and subjugation is always about stealing your energy. They make us think that you get paid for what you do. They give you a, a coupon. This coupon is your pay. And it's got pretty colors and it's got numbers on it and all this other things. And, and with this pretty, pretty little uh, uh, inscription, you can go buy a house. You could go buy a car. You could be free. You could take vacations and everything else. And then you know what we say, really? Well, that's what I want. You could go get some Jordans with it. Really? That's what I want. And so what do we do? We beg for the paper for the coupon so then we can go redeem it for something that we want and in actuality what they're doing is they're getting you to work for free because their coupon has an expiration date on it that they put on it they just didn't tell you and this is what we should be doing instead whenever you get paid whenever they give you coupons you have to pay yourself first. You redeem your coupons and transfer your coupons into an asset that the great creator has made. That's money. And the thing about it in the economy, they won't get rid of the assets because they need the assets to bring value to the economy itself. So you need to bring value to yourself. You need to bring value to your energy. Whenever you work, why in the world are we accepting something that's worthless for giving up our priceless energy? You should only accept an asset for another asset. Now, they may not pay you that way, but that doesn't mean that you got to save that way. Transfer that payment into an asset. What is an asset? The most easiest and most fundable, fundamental way to do it is this way. If the great creator made it, then it is money. It's an asset. If man created it, then it is a deceptive lie to steal your energy. Did man make cash or did the great creator make cash? Man made cash. It's a coupon. It's a deceptive tactic. Did the great creator or man make the fruit trees. Now, in today's world, they have synthetic fruit trees. And what do those synthetic fruit trees do? It steals your energy and makes you ill and, and kills your physical body. That's not made by the great creator. What does the great creator have? The, the great creator food sources does what? Replenishes, rebuilds and nourishes and what does it do for your body it gives energy to your body energy for energy is a fair exchange we have to get back to understanding what true the difference between the price of something and the value of something so whenever you get paid at whatever it is that you do even if they give you coupons, you immediately exchange that coupons. You take care of what you need to take care of, your debts, your, your quality of life, your standard of living. But your savings part of it, you got to go grab. You have to go and get something that God has made. The great, excuse me, not God, the great creator. And I say that because the, 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 the overall emphasis of that word is completely wrong, in my opinion. This is why I always say the great creator. You go exchange that for what the great creator has given as sustainability. You go get non-GMO food. You go get things of substance. You go get and you start to save in those things and you start to save in, in real money. And then guess what? When everything falls apart, the economy never falls. It's the common people that use it that do. It's their transferring of their, and what they take, ladies and gentlemen, is they're stealing your energy. Here's how it is. Imagine a person that has to come to you to eat, to sustain their life, and you charge them a price for it, that is subjugation and enslavement. 
See, slavery never ended. You hear Scotty, New Abolitionist Radio, you hear them talk about it all the way. But see, slavery was not only just incarceration and everything else in, in plantation. It was also an economic tool to where you give your priceless energy that produces an energy that they are able to to exchange for what? Assets. And then now whoever has assets has control. So whenever you get paid, listen to me. Before you pay your church, before you pay anything or anyone else, you worked for it, you have to save or measure it for you. Because I'm going to tell you, most institutions, you've been given for so long, the moment you stop giving, see what they give you. Think about how much has, I'm going to just use the church or, or a charitable uh, organization. Many of these charitable organizations are nothing but fraud. But just think about it. How many of these charitable organizations, you could have been given to them your whole life. And the moment you go on a hard time or something else, you go to that charitable organization, certain ones, and what are they going to say? Oh, we don't do that. We only take. You see? Well, we take for this, and they give you the excuse why they take. But see, in a real collective prudence, whenever you need it, is that those that you've been given are in need as well, because you're in need. So it would be a fair exchange. You've been given what? You having a problem. What's the problem? Well, here, this is what we need to do. But I was saying, that is the ecosystem in work. So what is it that you should be doing? Is what we're going to cover in the next, after we come out of the commercial break. Um, if you have a question or comment, definitely make it known. Give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, then hit star, star. Uh, I'll be back on the board after we hit the commercial uh, break. But these are the things that we need before you pay anyone else. I know, I know, I know what the book says. But I'm going to tell you something. The great creator doesn't need your cash. The man that reads the book does. The organization that had the building fund does. The organization that says that they're working for this and that for children, they need it, but what are they really doing? Are you are you on their books? Do you see what they really do with everything? And I would tell you, no, you don't. No, you don't. Nine times out of ten. No, ten out of ten is that you're working off a of blind faith because there's those good people. Really. The system has indoctrinated them to be a certain way. We need to be looking at things more honestly. As I always say, the truth doesn't need you. You need the truth. We need the truth. The truth doesn't need us. It stands alone. You're listening to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. <laughs> Podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. Okay, 
Absolutely. Welcome back, everyone, to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. In this last 30 minutes of the show, if you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Jump in on the conversation. We'd love to hear from you and would, so that you can have whatever question or comments that you have. Uh, let's share it because that's very, very important to us all. All right. So in this uh, last part of the show, we're going to talk about some specific things that I think that you should be doing. Some things that I, that I do myself has been, you know, some of them been extremely beneficial, but some of them have been fundamentally crucial for me because it changed my overall disciplines of things. And one of the, the probably the first and foremost thing that you should be doing is that you should be looking at yourself the way that the great creator has made you. And that is, in my opinion, the number one thing that you do. Because once you do that, there comes a acknowledgement and a reverence and an appreciation for that overall gift of, of, of love and of harmony, as Brother Davis would say, harmony. And so, which is very important because it was something that didn't have to happen but was given. And when you look at yourself as the way that the great creator has created you, there's an appreciation for all forms of life because you realize something. Wait a minute. I didn't ask to be here. So there's an obligation for me to be here that everything that I need would already be here. And now all I have to do is execute my overall free will in that, and I choose to be, appreciate what was given to me out of love. And it changes your whole perspective of everything. And that's very, very important because it changes your perspe perspective of the greatest lie that, that man imposes on other men is the subjugation. They lie through the death process. Then you realize something. You can't die. And there is no man that could kill you because there was no man that gave you life. How can you kill something and you didn't give it life? You don't know the process of what was, what was initiated to create it, so how can you end it? You can think you did. Yes, you can do things where you don't see that individual a uh, uh, physical body anymore but that body doesn't move because the real life of it has transferred where does it go who knows the great creator does and it was fine when we came we have to make it fine while we're here and it's going to be fine when we make the transfer so it, it brings about a new appreciation of everything so when you start to look at things more holistically and you look at things from a sincere standpoint, then you start to resonate different and you're able to pick up on things. You'll be able to discern if someone is sincere or if they're not sincere. You'll be able to discern if something is correct or if it's not correct. You'll be able to discern what it is that you should do. You don't need to worry anymore. But what you do know is that the great creator has established the spirit of a law that the great creator won't even break. And we shouldn't break it either. The spirit of the law says that if you don't move, you do not travel. This, the spirit of the law says that if you don't know certain things, then you won't be able to gain in certain things. There is no obligation for the environment to bring about a pleasurable or a prosperous physical existence. That ability is yours to create. That ability is yours to create. And different circumstances fall under different spirits of the law, which is always fair, always equitable, always even, and always correct. It's the letter of the law that always lies. So now, 
in that spirit of the law, there are some things that you should know how to purify water that may be hazardous to your health. It may just be hazardous to your health, but it may not be hazardous to someone else's health. So it's fair and equitable. What I mean, someone else's may be hazardous to human consumption, but a dog or, or some other uh, living species, can, in, a tree can drink it and not have any ill effects. There are some things that won't affect you, but will affect other living. And because of all how the body is, is, is created, how it resonates and how, how it works and everything else, it facilitates what its nomenclature is. You have to know what's your nomenclature, how it works. And what's required? There's a work that comes about everything. And it's not about a sense of entitlement that man has created in the falsehood of an economic system. It's all about entitlement. So you work at different things. And then there's a, there's a spiritual law that goes with it that reciprocates what it is, your energy puts out now that energy that you put out in the spirit of the the law or in the ecosystem may not always work inside of the economy or or man's uh, uh, economy because it's totally two different systems so I say that for this reason it's important that we do everything that we possibly can do that we're supposed to do beyond reasons of just what's in our best interest, but what's in the best interest of all. But you first start with you, of course. So here's how everything collapses and you prosper. Because you knew, you resonated, and you felt that, hey, The spirit of the law is telling me, don't violate this. Learn this. Learn how to be able to find water. Learn how to be able to do this. Learn how to be a prodigious saver. Learn how to to engage yourself in in the ecosystem and the great creator, what the great creator has given as money. Learn how to engage in that and walk away from the cash. Use the cash to get what you need, but you realize that the cash is valueless. So you hold no confidence in it. That way the promise when they, when they break it will not affect you because you was never holding tight on to it. Hoping they, I, they said they promised, they promised, they promised is a promissory note. They promised that I'll be, I'll be okay. You, you don't hold on to that. You create your own prosperity. How do you create your own prosperity? You realize that this is a sham and you need to do that. So you start to acquire wherever you are from whatever it is that you get. When you start putting out for the spirit of the law to respond to you, you'll be surprised at what comes to you. What comes to you? You, And we shouldn't always focus on everything on using cash to acquire things. There are other things that you can use and you can do by making them. There are other things that you can do to increase your overall intrinsic knowledge so that you'll have even further intrinsic value. You'll know how to fix certain things. You'll know how to uh, purify water. You'll know how to uh, uh, acquire a food source. You'll know how to grow a food source. Those are all intrinsical value that becomes priceless is a doctor that works in the synthetic world more valuable than a doctor that works in the holistic world in the ecosystem. That doctor that is a doctor of synthetic nature is lost. But the good doctor may have never went to school but was properly educated. Being properly educated is how, when everything else collapses around you, you are able to prosper. Not schooled, but educated. 
And one of the things that you could do is educate yourself and then collaborate with others and, 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 and have an act of furtherance with your education and you share because the process of learning is never complete until you give it away what you've learned. So this is how we start to prosper. We start to learn, this is how I should be engaging. I should be learning about what holistic herbs, what processes are natural that I can use to supplement and not to use this, uh, this synthetic nature, this syn synthetic practice, or to engage in how do, how do I acquire food when the grocery stores, when the trucks haven't, haven't come into the grocery store to drop off a load? How do I take a, a garden that is barren? How do I get it to produce food? How do I get it to produce and go through the different processes of the problems that is in, innate to the life cycle itself. What happens if, if a disease happens to it? What, what, what water does it need? How does it need? What other things can I augment with it? What can I use to strengthen the overall plant so it grows faster and it has a bigger yield of food? What is it that I can do? Because everything you can do. Now you are working and creating, and then now you, when you learn this by way of doing it, there's an education that can never be stolen from you and you don't want a piece of paper and a certificate to say that you're a doctor you got a master's and this and that you don't care about that that is mildly interesting because you were sitting on your butt and just regurgitating what they were telling you to get that this one required you to be out on your hands and your knees working this one in involves you engaging the energy that the great creator had given to you as a gift and as a token but man does it the opposite way they give you the book for you to follow the rules and when you do that you get to put a square on the top of your head with a black gown with talons all around it and you put, go into the ritual practice of Committing your life to the system. That's why you wear a square on your head and you've graduated. You've graduated in the ritual ceremony of your own natural demise. These practices are no coincidence. These rituals are no coincidence. They serve a very, very distinctive purpose. They just don't tell you that. Why? Because it's, it's a need-to-know basis. You're just supposed to obey. And they know that many will because they trust blindly. Trust blindly. So, in this, these are some of the things that we should be engaging in. So that when there is collapses all around us, they don't adversely affect us because we've already prepared ourselves and we have an appropriate response. I know how to do this. I know how to create this. I don't, may not need the pharmacy or, or I may not need, you know, the, the Walgreens or, or this prescription, but I know that this works for this. I know that works for this. For every disease that man has created in the laboratory, the great creator has a herb to cure it. You're not about care, health care. You're about cures. You engage in all the cures, all the organic, all the, the, the heirloom, all of the holistic cures for poverty, for disease, for prosperity for relationships for development and more importantly for the passing down of an inheritance in establishing a culture of sustainability and these things all can be done but they have to be done individually first with small steps 
And then your small steps continue to multiply themselves. And before you know it, you you run and you walk the world over. And this is how we prosper. We work. And I'm not talking about the traditional domesticated, indoctrinated, obedience-driven work that we've been taught. I'm talking about real work that matters, real work that, real work that yields a value, that has a value to it, that actually utilizes and develops and enhances all of our talents. One of the things, some of the things that we should be doing is, one, taking the opportunity to learn and to find out as much as you can for different situations because all of our situations are different. We're in all different parts of the, the globe. We're, we're in all different areas, all different regions, and we deal with different uh, uh, effects of, of being in that region. The desert is different than the, than the rainforest. And when we start to engage that way and take on these challenges, and stop trying. And the moment we stop trying to, we buy, the moment we stop buying a lottery ticket is the moment that we realize that we've already won, and the answers are already within us. We don't have no time for a lottery ticket. That's waiting on eight o'clock, nine o'clock, or whenever they they had a ball jumping up and down in that little thing. I ain't got time for that. I'm busy. I'm busy educating myself and all that I love and cherish. So, you all know the situations and where you are, the things that you need to be doing. One, I always would say, move out of what man gives you and, and move into, excuse me, what, what man has, has paid you and move into what, what the great creator has given you. So, if you look at how you establish something that has value or how you establish something that that that. Uh, uh, is relevant. Look at who made it. Now, are there some things that man has has created that are are uh, valuable and, and necessary? Yes, there are inventions that man creates that are actually a part of the ecosystem. You have to be able to distinguish those. So, use your opportunities that you have now. Acquire the things that you need. Think about where you are and what it is. When everything else, when when they pull a switch and they turn the lights out on your everyday, what you've been used to, your your accustomed lifestyle in this system, when you have to stand on your own, will you be standing for long? And what will you be standing on? Will you be standing on a hope? Or will you be standing on the, the education of the process of the things that you have learned that you know works? You don't believe that they work. You know that they work. And then you'll find something. You'll find that the basket of bountifulness has always been full. Because no matter what man does and what man tries to destroy or what man built in adverse of the great creator, the weeds grow up everywhere. And there's value in weeds. If you know it, and you can engage it, and you can extract it, you'll be glad that those weeds are so wild, and they just grow everywhere. That's how you remain sovereign and self-determined. And you'll see that this basket is completely full. The lacking only comes about in civilization or man's economy. So, this is what we all should be engaging in. There is no hard and fast rule. There is no hard and fast that you got to do this, 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 and this. There are some that can just be energized from the sun itself because they've worked at it and they've educated themselves how to make that work, how to engage that. There's some that, you know, some some people can run fast, some people run slow. There's all the degrees of your capabilities in you, long as you're moving. So I would say wean yourself, wean ourselves as much as possible from what this economy has established 
and rely on, and when you start to rely on, and when you get past that, you'll see that, man, this is even easier and more beneficial than ever before. And I'm going to tell you something. Your appetite will change. You won't have an insatiable appetite. You'll be satisfied. And with that satisfi- satisfaction, it also brings that satisfaction, brings about a clarity and a balance in your life. What you think about will be clear and balanced. No longer will you be infirmed. Your mind will be infirmed with all of this, you know, sickness and craziness and, and unevenness and unbalanced. You know, all that stuff goes away. It goes away. So, how do you prosper? You go back into the ecosystem. You go back under the spirit of the law. And that, ladies and gentlemen, requires a lot of work. But it's worth it. It doesn't pay you. It doesn't steal your energy and give you in return worthless. It multiplies your energy and it gives you back an asset far beyond what you ever thought possible. Always has, always will. This is where we prosper. In the meantime, we do all the things that are necessary so that we can have that way of that desire, so that we will, instead of suppressing it, we will actually nurture it. Because some will say, no, nah, I don't want, man, that's all utopia. That's all this. That type of energy never going to be satisfied. That, uh, that type of energy has always been thoroughly, thoroughly schooled. And they're going to continue because it's their choice. It's their choice. You don't have to be that individual. So with that being said, I just want to say thank you all for listening and I greatly, greatly appreciate next week. Um, we will have um, Kim. I'm going to try to get, I'm gonna, I need to talk to Kim this weekend. And we're going to put a campaign together uh, to assist Kim in this journey to bring about a more protective. There needs to actually be a responsibility and the responsibility is ours that we hold the agreed upon system to work equitably be equitable be equi- have an equitable treatment for all and we're going to be working with Kim Melancon on that and I look forward to having her on and, and speaking to her in, in uh, if you all would like to engage in that with us as well and remember that what it is that we're trying to do is that we're we're trying to bring about a real equitable moral direction and solution to the problems that we have today and think is going to be so valuable because we will learn a lot about ourselves. We will learn just how capable we are. So with that being said, I just want to say thank you all for listening. It's never goodbye. As always, we'll see you later. And before you ask for a fortune, make sure to give one away. Brother Braggs, if you would be so inclined, time us out. And much love, much respect. We'll talk to you soon. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. We slice
nice and cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. 